drew mixed reviews in their first two performances at home. Now it's time to see how their act will play out on the road. This is their first gig out of town before one of the toughest crowds they'll ever face. As the curtain rises this afternoon, both these teams have KO'd a couple of squads that weren't ready for prime time. The competition gets tougher this week, and we'll see who is taking the bows at the end of the game. Welcome to Death Valley, Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge on the campus of LSU. The Auburn Tigers prepare for their SEC opener against a team which, like Auburn, is in a rebuilding project. The reclamation for both programs on track thus far. With Charlie Trotman, Quentin Riggins, and the Auburn Network broadcast team, I'm Jim Fife. The Tigers from the Plains begin a rugged six-game stretch of SEC competition that will tell a lot about how far they've advanced. Auburn and LSU has evolved into one of the most competitive series in college football. Well, competitive may not be the word for it. Consider that seven of the last nine meetings have been decided by just over four points. It's also been a series marked by spectacular plays and big upsets. The unexpected has become the ordinary. There's no reason to expect this one to be any different. All right, a possession play early on for LSU. Two blockers in there for Davey. He's got a slot to the left side, the ball at the right hash mark. He's in the shotgun on a third down and about seven. Davey taking the snap, back to throw, pumps one over the middle, intercepted by Kenny Kelly. Dodges the tackle at the 45 to the 40, 35 at the 30, to the 25, to the 20, out of bounds along the near boundary, near the 20-yard line. It was Kenny Kelly who cut in front of the intended receiver, and Kelly is out of bounds, we'll say, at the 19-yard line. A return of 30 yards, and Auburn has a big turnover early on. Duval was a place kicker in high school, an All-American. He's been used primarily as a punter. Veronis unable to answer the call this week, so a 27-yard field goal try, angled back to the left for Duval, and he kicks it up, and it is good. Damon Duval. Gives Auburn a 3 to nothing lead at the 9.41 mark. Third down and about 15, maybe 16. Rohan Davy, the quarterback. Backpedaling, setting up the throw. Big rush. Gets away, but he can't escape a second tackler. That's Jimmy Brumbaugh, who came in low and got him from behind. Good pass rush by that Auburn defense, and they look real sharp today. Hooker to the far side. Two wide outs to the near side, and they pull the tight end back off the line. He's a wing back. They're in the shotgun, second and seven. Leared to throw over the middle. Fires. Hooker's got it down inside the 30. Ryan Hooker to the 25. Hooker to the 24-yard line. Crossing pattern. Fred Booker hit him, knocked him down. It's a gain of 21. And the former quarterback from Pontotoc, Mississippi, has a long gain and a first down at the 24 of LSU. Third and will say six. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Leard fakes the inside handoff. He throws. Pass is caught down inside the 15 to the 10. It's Robinson and Tavarius. Robinson carries a tackler with him to the nine, and that's an Auburn first down. Auburn going apparently with a field goal try. Is that right? They're sending a whole new unit onto the field. So Coach Tuberville indicating that he's not willing to take any chances in this situation. He wants to put some points on the board. If not a touchdown, then certainly a field goal. Watch for a trick play here, Jim. Auburn has one in the cover. Jacob Allen is the holder. There's the fake, and he tosses to Damon Duval, the kicker. He's going outside. He's going in. Touchdown, Auburn! How about that? It went right to the holder, Jacob Allen. He knelt on the ground and just threw the ball. A blind pass over his right shoulder to the kicker, Damon Duvall, who has 4-5 speed. He sprinted around the corner, got outside, darted into the end zone, and Auburn, yes, indeed, there are a bunch of trick plays that nobody has seen, and that is one of them. As the extra point attempt is being attempted, Jim, that just brings a smile to your face. Coach Tuberville, so innovative with those trick plays. We'll talk about that play more in a minute. Now they'll try the point after touchdown. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Auburn is up 10 to nothing on LSU with a lot of trickery and foolery in Tom Tuberville's bag. Single setback, Rusty Williams. Here's Ben Leard pulling away for center. Gives to Williams, looking to get outside. Breaks a tackle. Sprints to the 35, to the 40, down the far sideline, 45. He's at midfield. He's to the LSU 45. He is going out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Shane O'Toole, Mark Roman chased him out of bounds, but Rusty Williams showing some fancy footwork on a 29-yard burst. Worthy near side, Daniels far side. Again, the ball at the left hash mark as Auburn moves from our left to our right. 
Leard's in the shotgun, has nobody in the backfield with him. Ben Waits takes the snap from Kubelik. He's looking, he's looking. He fires long, downfield, got a man with the step. Daniels, he has it inside the five! Touchdown, Auburn! Ronnie Daniels, beautiful throw by Leard, who had plenty of time to pick out an open man and spotted him and hit him in mid-stride for a 36-yard touchdown, and Auburn extends the lead to 16 to nothing. Third down and five, and Jim LSU thought Auburn was going to run some type of underneath crossing route, something just to get the first down. They send Ronnie Daniels, who really is a star in the making at Auburn, folks, as a wide receiver, straight down the field on a takeoff route. He beats the defender, and what a pass by Ben Lear. Third and ten, they'll load up the shotgun with three wide receivers, two to the near side. Snap back to Davey. Davey in the pocket, chased out of the pocket, hit. Got fumbled the football, loose, Auburn falls on it, it's Auburn ball. He was hit from behind, coughed it up, left it on the ground. Quentin Reese is coming up with a loose ball, and look at Auburn, deep in LSU land with a first and 10 at the 16. Third down and about 13, 14 to go. Takes the snap, retreating, firing downfield, intercepted at the Auburn 30, looking for running room back to the near side, 35 at the 40, breaking a tackle, 45, midfield, LSU 45 and out of bounds, and at the 43-yard line is Adlai Troll. First and 10 LSU at the Auburn 46, and losing yardage, taking the handoff is Mealy, and he is belted hard by Haven Field. Man alive, Fields came through there snarling and growling and just nailed him back outside midfield at the 48-yard line. Big loss on the play from 37 yards away, far hash mark. Kick is away. It's long enough, but it hit the upright. It is no good. He hooked it to the left. It hit the left upright and bounced away no good. So LSU scoring opportunity goes by the board, and Auburn still pitching a shutout. They'll have first and 10. Will the Auburn Tigers at the 20-yard line? Slot left, wide out right. Single setback, Lear from under center, retreating the throw. Down the far side, Daniels with the step. He catches it at the 45. He's at midfield, 45, 40, 35, 30. He's still on his feet. He's at the 25. Daniels has the ball knocked away. Loose football. Scramble for it in the end zone. Auburn comes up with it. Touchdown, Auburn! Daniels came up with the loose ball. Are you believing that? The ball was knocked loose from Ronnie Daniels back around the 25-yard line. It squirted on into the end zone. There was a big pileup for it. He somehow got up on his feet, ran into the end zone, fell on the football, touchdown Auburn, and the Tigers are up 23 to nothing. That was an unbelievable play. First, the pass from Ben Leard was just absolutely perfect. Another takeoff route, and then the move that Ronnie Daniels made when he caught the ball. He actually split two defenders, breaking back to this near side of the field, and I thought that he was down, Jim, I when they too. tackled him. Somebody came from his blind side, hit him. I thought the ground caused the fumble. It was Fred Booker, number one, the cornerback, coming from this near sideline, and he never saw him, and I thought it was a fumble, but it went into the end zone. A bizarre play. Touchdown, Ronnie Daniels, and Charlie, he was the man who ran 25 yards into the end zone, picked up the loose ball at the one-yard line, and sprinted in there. How he got up off the turf after taking a jarring shot and made him cough up the football and then had the presence of mind to run in there and pick up the loose ball, fall on it in the end zone for a touchdown. Auburn 24 to nothing over LSU. This has been an unbelievable first half. Just an unbelievable game. Also, a lot of people involved in that play. Ronnie Daniels makes the great catch, but Ben Lear just put the ball. That was as pretty a pass as you'll ever see a quarterback throw in college or pro. Here from under center, Booty looking to throw. Fires, pass, juggle, juggle, juggle. Finally intercepted Adlai Trone. Adlai Trone with the interception off the, the fingertips of Abram Booty and a couple of Auburn defenders. I think Larry Casher was back there tipping it up. They tipped it up two or three times, and finally, Cone came down with the ball with a minute and 49 seconds left in the half. Waiting for the deep snap. Josh Booty, he takes it low. He's got it, and he fires long downfield. It is intercepted by Auburn Rodney Creighton. He comes back to the 25 to the 30. They hit him, knock him down at the 32-33 yard line. That looked like a, a busted play, some confusion. Somebody turned the wrong way, and Josh Booty just overthrew everybody into the waiting hand of Rodney Creighton, a 10-yard return, and Auburn will close out the first half with 30 seconds to go in possession of the football and a 24 to nothing lead. Relaying the information to his teammates, pulls away from center and floats one downfield. Marquis Cooper with the shoulder catch at the 45, 40, 35, 30, out of bounds over on the far side at the 27-yard line. Ryan Clark forced him out of bounds or he would have been gone for good. 
awaiting the snap. There's the snap, and the kick is away. Plenty long, plenty high. Good by Damon Duvall. Damon Duvall has been the star of the game so far in so many respects, accounting for a lot of those 27 Auburn points that are on the scoreboard. Has them lined up in a, actually a triple wing to the right, one wide out to the near side, one set back is Rusty Williams. He play fakes to Williams, going to launch it long down the far side. Worthy, he's got it at the 25, and he goes out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Worthy, as that pass was thrown into the wind, had to sort of wait a little bit on it. Mark Roman was the defender on the play, and Worthy's momentum just took him out of bounds or he would have been long gone. 40-yard play, Auburn at the 24-yard line of LSU with a first down. Auburn again with great protection. Play fake to Rusty Williams. Long throw over the all-SEC cornerback, Mark Roman. And uh, Reggie Worthy does a magnificent job of keeping his concentration on the ball and a foot in bound. That famed LSU crowd support is non-existent right now. Leard in the shotgun, four wideouts. Leard looking, firing, passes caught. Marquise Cooper breaks a tackle. He's at the 10, trying to pull away at the 9, and he's wrestled down at the 8-yard line. First and goal, Auburn Tigers. Worthy splits right, and here's Daniels to the left. The ball at the 8-yard line. First and goal, Tigers. Robinson is the setback. He gets the handoff to the left. He cuts it in to the 10, to the 5, breaks a tackle at the 1, and he's in. Touchdown, Auburn! How about that? The little... Water bug, Robinson, and nobody was going to contain him that time. Well, that's exactly what the coaches have been after. They want that outside threat, and that time Clifton Robinson caught a beautiful block on the outside. I'm not sure who made that block. Uh, it was one of the offensive linemen that made that block, and then he cut it in just inside the pylon, broke a tackle at about the two-yard line, and uh, just, a, just a tremendous run by Clifton Robinson, a very well-executed running play. 33 to nothing is Duvall. Out of the hold of Jacob Allen, kicks it up and through. Auburn leads it 34 to nothing. Can you believe it? And it looks like the exodus from Israel. This crowd is headed out of here. All right, here's Booty from his 30-yard line. First and 10. Got four wideouts, double wing. He's in the shotgun. Takes it, sprints to the right, got in trouble, and is hit from behind, lost the football. Auburn's going to fall on it. Inside the 20-yard line. Booty hit from behind, had it knocked away by pounds, the various pounds, and falling on it was James Callier. So Auburn forces an LSU turnover, and they'll have it at the LSU 19. They second and seven. He's in there at the lone setback. Leard fakes to him, throws to his right. Leard looking upfield to the tight end. Swagger, he's got it at the goal line, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown! Auburn. Well done on both ends as Leard spotted Swagger back there around the goal line and shot the pass and Swagger hauled it in for 17 yards. Long snap count. He's got it. He wants to pass. He unwinds and unloads in the end zone. It is incomplete. Intended for Dangerfield and this ball game is over. Tommy Tuberville on his 45th birthday has won a 41-7 verdict over LSU in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a place where it's next to impossible to win. what you call a team effort right there guys oh, yeah. you came down to a hostile place you took the crowd out of it you played just perfect I mean that's what you that's what you call a heck of a football game right there you put four quarters together I'm proud of you can't say anything else you can't we can't get any more out of it. we're just getting better and better just stay positive let's enjoy this one when we get done singing a fight song when everybody back up on that field with a cigar in their hand yeah.
plan was just to come out and play the whole four quarters. You know, we had a couple weeks ago, we had a team down. We kind of let them get back in the third quarter. And, you know, the coach still kind of beat it in our head to just play the whole four quarters. We got a decent team. We, we playing the whole four quarters, so it, it worked out pretty good for us. Because last week, we kind of, I dropped two. I ain't drop them, but I, you know, I tell them and I didn't just get them. And they've been knowing me all week, so I was kind of forced into getting everything. But uh, I'm glad I can make it happen. I'm glad the team won and the Tigers back, baby. I tell the kids, my grandkids, how we stood out in the middle field and smoked this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, it, was good. it felt real good. Just won the 41 7. And uh, we fought hard the whole game, never gave up. Four quarters, we played good football. Tell me about the trick play. Um, we worked on it a little bit this week, you know, figured LSU is going to be a close game, and we had to pull something out of our sleeves, so we worked on it a few times, and when he called it, you know, we executed like it was supposed to be done and came away with the touchdown on it. What, what's this going to do for this team? It's a tremendous confidence boost for us uh, to be able to come in here on, you know, on ESPN in front of the, you know, one of the most hostile crowds in America and, and, and beat a team like that. It's going to be great for us. We knew when we came out, we knew when we came out the day that we had we had to dominate these guys, and we did. We heard it all on TV, on ESPN, that we was going to get beat. It just, it just made us mad because it's just, they kept saying that every time we play that we're going to get beat. And we came out and beat LSU. Uh, you know, one of the key factors that they said coming into the game, the coaches uh, really stressed on us, was if we go in there and we punch a couple in early, we can put a dagger in that crowd early and shut them up for the rest of the time. And I think that's uh, that, th that helped us out a lot that we that we came in and did that. Well, you're running the football and uh, it makes a difference. You're hitting up in there quick. Yeah, I played a little bit in high school, so I'm just trying to get back in the groove. I had one earlier. I didn't have my feet. Uh, just got to get back used to it and uh, just to help the team as either way I could, you know, uh, do my best. <laughs> I thought I was gone, you know. I just kept looking back at him, making sure he wouldn't catch me. That he crept, he crept up on me. That so. guy blindsided you big time. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, I was like, oh man, because I started. You hit the ground and then saw the what? You saw the football. I hit the ground. I saw it pop forward. So then that's when I jumped up and ran forward to get it. So because I knew if I didn't get it. It was going to be trouble Monday morning. So. I can't say enough about how well my offensive line blocked. Uh, when the tight ends blocked, when the running backs blocked, they, they made it easy to sit back there and, and give good throws to the receivers. You, you were checking into the right place a lot, too. Yeah, that had a lot to do with it. You know, we had we had a lot of good preparation. The coaches knew we know what they wanted to do, had a good game plan for us, and we just went out and executed it. There it's